Sister Angela Young. Sister Angela Young, the time is yours. All right, so this song here I recorded maybe about a couple of weeks ago, and it seems like that has just been the song of choice for a lot of people. We've sung it many times here at the uh, church, at uh, San Bernardino Community Seventh Day Adventist Church. Waymaker, he's a miracle worker, he's a promise keeper, he is the light in the darkness. That is who God is. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Hey, rainmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hey, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, Ooh, hey, we make a miracle word, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Hey, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey, way maker. Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you so much, uh, Sister Angela Young, for that great message and song, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, a light in the darkness. That is definitely who our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. Uh, let's pray together. We ask you, O oh God, that you will grant us clarity and understanding of this word. Thank you, Lord, for the message and song that has just uh, invigorated us, rejuvenated our hearts, oh God, inspired us and reminded us of who you are in the difficulties and the darkness of the world. Lord, we know that you are a light in the darkness. We know that you are the way maker and the miracle worker and the promise keeper, our provider. So as we open up this word, we ask you that you will grant us the clarity and understanding of a familiar passage of scripture for many of us. I believe, Lord, that you've led uh, me to this passage in a moment like this, for it needs to be heard once again. So give, it, give us what we need at this time. Speak to our hearts and our families. In Jesus' name, amen. I call your attention to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, call your attention to Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, verse number six. We'll go through this quickly, Revelation 14, verse number six. We recognize this passage of scripture as the three angels' message. And I'm going to read it to you in the King James Version, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. So for the next three weeks, uh, we're going to go over the, angel, the three angels' message. We're going to go one angel at a time. So uh, today, we're going to hear from angel number one, or what angel one states. And then next week, angel two. Uh, and then... The following week, angel number three. As you guys know, next week is uh, Resurrection Weekend if, uh, that the world celebrates at that time. So I pray that we will have even more people on this uh, on this Zoom conference. And I pray that you let get the word out. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. Uh, the message for, well, the, the, just the Bible study. The Bible study, the Bible study is entitled The Everlasting Gospel. The everlasting gospel. The Bible says in Revelation 14, verse 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. The everlasting gospel, the everlasting gospel, the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14. So three angels message. We're going to start with the first angel. Uh, let's go over this Bible study together. So we got to break down some of the sim symbolism that's here. So when the Bible says, and I saw another angel. John is the author of the book of Revelation, as we know, John the Revelator. And uh, now he's in the crux of things, if you will. And he says he saw another angel fly. So first of all, let's, get, let's make sure we all understand that the angel that he sees or that he saw is symbolic to humanity. When the Bible says, in this particular scripture that John, when he says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach, that is stating that there are people in the end times that will be preaching this gospel, this everlasting gospel. So the first thing we got to understand is the angel is not literal. The angel is symbolic to those that will be preaching this gospel. Now, there's something else that we got to learn. And I just, this part of the scripture, this one is new to me. I've studied this many times, preached it many times, but I never realized this component. 
it says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Ah. So, and I was going over this with, uh, with, with one of my classmates from Andrews yesterday. That dwell on the earth, that dwell on the earth, that dwell on the earth. We ask ourselves, who are the people that dwell on the earth? When you ask yourself who the people that dwell on the earth, many people will say to you, well, it's humanity as well, or it's all those that are living at the time. Well, um, that dwell on the earth is also symbolic. It's not referencing to the righteous. It's referencing to the unrighteous. Now, this theology comes from... Uh, a scholar of our church, um, uh, Stefanovic. I was reading his, uh, his commentary a couple of days ago and, and I picked this up, but it's also within the Seventh day Adventist commentary uh, where you can see that when you read Revelation chapter six, verse 10, and read, when you read Revelation chapter three, verse 10. Revelation three, verse 10 and Revelation six, verse 10 will also give this to you as well. So this is biblical, that those that dwell on the earth are individuals that are the unrighteous. So it's as if we're saying here, and please stay with the Bible study. And we can we can we can talk after uh, when I'm at the at the end of this. When John sees this angel that has this everlasting gospel to preach, this angel is symbolic of the righteous of those that are going to be carrying and preaching this everlasting gospel to those that dwell on the earth, to those that are unrighteous, those that, have, that still have an opportunity to be saved, those that are still in the valley of decision, maybe those that have still, that, that the door is still open for them. I don't know who's who, at that time, only God knows, but I do know enough that there will be, there's a moment in time that God will allow for those individuals that haven't fully made that decision for them to have one more opportunity to make that decision. So by the gospel being preached at this time in earth's history, now and at this time in earth's history specifically, people still have an opportunity. And so let's talk about this everlasting gospel. Let's talk about this everlasting gospel. This everlasting gospel. So um, here I got a few, um, I got a few points. I want, you know, if, you, if you're writing stuff down, you should, you should be writing all this stuff down as well. Uh, the, the angel symbolic, symbolic of the righteous, of those that will be preaching the gospel at the time, at, in the end time, and the people that dwell on the earth are those that have received the mark of the beast, but still have time. There's a moment there that even though they may have received the mark, they still, there's still a moment that when they hear the gospel being preached, that their hearts can be changed and that they can get in uh, with the righteous at that time. So the everlasting gospel, Number one, one of the things we need to know, learn about, know about the everlasting gospel, that the everlasting gospel is a global message with a global mission. The everlasting gospel is a global message with a global mission. The Bible says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred, and tongue, and people. This, this everlasting gospel is a global message. It's for all people. It's not just for black people, just not for white people, for Hispanics, for Asians. It's for the entire world, for every nation, every kindred, and every tongue. That's why the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This message is to be given 
and to be received by all people, not just a certain group of people. That, that theology has to go. That teaching has to go. That thought process has to go. The Lord died for everybody. We are all God's children. He created us all. It doesn't matter the ba your background. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. It doesn't matter your demographics. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter. God died, sent his son Jesus to die for us all. And the message, the everlasting gospel, this gospel is to be preached throughout all the world. And everyone has access to the same God. Everyone has access to Jesus the Christ. So it's a global message with a global mission. That word preach, we, it, is, it is to preach. You, as you speak it, you preach it. But then also preaching is also, there's a silent way to preach. And that's through our action, through our attitude, through the way we treat people. That's why this is a global message with a global mission. And that message is to fear God. We're going to talk about that momentarily. And that mission is to get people uh, in the path of salvation, connected with Jesus Christ. So it is, a, it is a global, the everlasting gospel is a global message with a global mission. The everlasting gospel is a gospel that glorifies God, that glorifies God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him. All right, so, when, so, the, so that glorifying, when we talk about glorifying God, it's, there's a lot to, to it, trying to keep it as simple as we can. But we got to make sure we break all this stuff down. So where it talks about um, saying with the loud voice, fear God. Number one, understand. we're glory Now, the, the, the everlasting gospel is to glorify God. Fearing God is not the, the understanding of fear as if we are afraid of God. Fearing God is the understanding that we revere God, that we reverence God, that we respect God. And so we have to make sure that that is clear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. God did not destroy Lucifer that turned into Satan in the beginning of time, because if he did that, the angels would worship him out of fear. And everything that the Lucifer, Satan said about God would be correct. The Lord did not destroy Adam and Eve at that very moment when they bit of the fruit because then it would have been true that we worship the lord out of fear the lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of a sound mind and so he has let everything play out so that we know how wicked the enemy is and we will know how good god is and so i don't worship god in fear all those fear tactics that that we have used and i'll say we because even i especially as a youth youth leader for many years, we've used those fear tactics. Throw all of your, your CDs, all your Tupac CDs, and Snoop Doggy Dog CDs, throw them in the fire. Let's put fear on people. No, 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 no. Those things have to go. We don't put fear in people. But that is not the teaching of God. We let people love God, see the goodness of God. Look at his mercies. Watch this. I'm going to say this, and you may, I said it on Wednesday. I may, I'm, I'm saying it right now. I'm, it may be in my notes to say it later on. As bad as this virus is, as many people as it has, it has impacted, is impacting the world and has killed many. If God was not merciful, it would be worse. It would be worse. So let's understand this thing that God is a fair God. God is a just God. And we don't worship God because we're afraid of God. <clears throat> we worship God because he's a loving God. What greater love than this than a man laid down his life for his friends? And so we fear God, we respect God. We give God the glory. He's the one, he's the only one that deserves the glory and the honor and the praise. For the hour of his judgment, the judgment, the judgment, the judgment, we shouldn't be afraid of the judgment. There's no reason why we as Christians should be afraid of the judgment. As a kid, I used to be afraid of the judgment. I mean, I never forget. I never forget. One time, um, oh man, I got my parents on the line. They're gonna get me later on when I go to their house for lunch. I know, I know, I know. 
But I remember, I remember this one time I was at, we were at a house, uh, Sabbath afternoon. Uh, church had finished. Um, I don't think I went to church that morning. Hey, Amen. Mom, go hold it to me. Go hold it again. Go hold it again. And I was at the house eating some good, some good lunch. We had some good lunch at someone's house. And two brothers came in. They were twins. Never forget, this was in Dallas, Texas, or in, in, in Texas, in Texas, Keene, Texas. Two brothers came in, and they said the Sunday law passed. And I was scared. I was all, man, all I could see was fire. I thought I wasn't going to make it, y'all. I was afraid. And I said, Lord, eh, look, I didn't even know what to pray. My, my, one of my best friends, uh, we were together, man. And we were, and, and we were, and we were, uh, and so then later on, obviously, he, they came back and said, you know what? It was, uh, it was, because uh, they were pastors. They were ministry, ministry, uh, ministry students at the school. And so they were, they were trying to show off some ministry tactics, I guess. It kind of made me mad. But anyway, that's another story. And so, and so they were like, we were just playing. It was a joke. It was a hoax. The Sunday law did not get passed yet. And, but that put fear in our heart because we were like, man, you know what? So then my friend and I, we started to try to change things around because of fear. But we have to know that it's not about that fear, but about that relationship. I changed things in my life and the changes were sustainable because I realized how good God is, how merciful God is, how gracious God is, and how loving God is. Not because I was afraid of God. I was afraid of not going to heaven. It's not about fear, it's about love. And so this judgment, we shouldn't be afraid of the judgment because if we have the blood of Jesus on our hearts, when the judgment comes, we will be okay. And so we got to build that relationship with the Lord for the hour of his judgment has come. In fact, in fact, if you ask me, we should really be excited about the judgment because now the judgment, now when the judgment comes, it's, it's, hey, it's game over. I'm making, I'm going. All those on the Zoom conference, y'all are going because now we don't have to deal with the drama anymore. We don't have to deal with coronavirus. We don't have to deal with earthquakes. We don't have to deal with famine. We don't have to deal with depression. We don't have to deal with, with, uh, with just crazy stuff anymore. When the judgment comes, those that are filthy, let them be filthy still. Those that are righteous, let them be righteous. And you know what? If we have the blood of Jesus on our doorposts or on our hearts, on our mind, we don't have to worry at all about the judgment. And so don't allow the judgment to put fear in your heart. Okay, let's look at the time. We got to go. We got to go. Not preaching, just teaching. Okay, so... Uh, we, we glorify God. All right. So it says, God, uh, same with the loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him. All right. Worship. Ah, this thing of worship is critical. Now, we as Adventists want to jump to the day. And it's, in the, it's, the, it's, the, it's theologically correct. But before we jump to the day, let's jump to the diligence of our worship. Ah, 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 ah. Because we have to understand that the day won't save you, but the diligence of your heart will save you. If you are in a true, genuine relationship with the Lord, listen, the Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so understand that we have to know that this everlasting gospel is teaching us the diligence of worship. The Jesus, the Bible says, I should say, that the Lord is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder. What is the reward? Well, the, Jesus says in Revelation, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. When we talk about the judgment, understand that the judgment, those that are not going to make it, listen, they, they receive their reward and that reward is hell fire but for those that have made it we receive our reward and our reward is heaven the lord said that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him worship god in spirit and in truth worship god have this relationship with him don't allow just the just the day or a day to consume all of your worship 
I should be worshiping God all through the week. I should worship God all the time. How in the world is it that angels worship the Lord 24-7? Ah, see, the problem that I have with that, well, I don't have a problem with angels worshiping God 24-7, but the angels don't understand what it's like to be redeemed. We know what it's like to be redeemed. And if we know what it's like to have been redeemed, then we ought to worship God even stronger than what the, how the angels worship God. Because remember something, when Jesus died on the cross, when he died on the cross, what he did there was he uh, gave us humanity an opportunity to, for heaven. And what he did was he justified himself throughout all of the universe. And so now everyone saw at this moment in time when the Lord died on the cross that the Lord cared about a fallen world enough to die. He cared about us, us enough to know to understand that even that there'll be people that won't even follow him, but yet still he died for them. The earth, the, the universe was justified. God's name was justified and they praised him even more. So now you and I understand that the Lord loved us enough. We are the only fallen world. We have failed. This world has, has fallen. This world is ugly. This world is wretched. This world is decrepit. This world is is is, is the pits compared to the universe. But yet still the Lord sent his son Jesus and, they, and he walked, not a weekend thing, but a 33 and a half year so that we can have an opportunity. And so because of that, we need to worship God in, with diligence. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. We praise your name. Lord, you are a good God. You are an awesome God. Build this relationship with God. Now, the, now, with the, with, as we go and we dig deep into the text, that diligence is also there as along with the day. Because now we dig deep into the text, it says, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. That takes us to Genesis, the creation story. We know that God is the creator. Jesus the Christ the second person of the Godhead is the creator. So we understand that he made the heavens in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis 1 verse 1. And we know that he created the, the sea and the fountains of water. We see the same uh, wording in the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. What uh, old, old school Seventh-day Adventists used to call the affirmation of their faith. I'm so glad we don't say that anymore. Because the affirmation of my faith is not the Ten Commandments. It is not the Sabbath day. The affirmation of my faith is Jesus. Amen. Somebody, let me just, I, I can't hear you, but let's, so let's hey, go like, yeah, I like that, Paul Ray. Just put your hands up if you agree with what I'm saying. <laughs> the affirmation of our faith is Jesus Christ. Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11 has the, also the same language, however. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou know thy son, know thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Six days, for six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The seas and all that in the mid, and blessed the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord uh, rest on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And so we see that same language of creation from Genesis. We see it in Exodus, and then we see it once again in Revelation. So we have to go to Revelation chapter 13 really quick. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13 so we can see the context of where this first angel is, uh, the context where John is writing this from. Revelation chapter 13. Um, thank you. I, I see uh, Sister Corsiana. With the amen. She just sent me a message, amen. All right, we're almost, we're almost finished. We're almost finished. But we got we to gotta go to Revelation chapter 13. So the everlasting gospel is a global message and a global, global message with a global miss, mi mission. It's, a, it's, uh, it's an, the everlasting gospel is glorifying God. And we're here in Revelation chapter 14, but I got to go to Revelation chapter 13. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, I, I saw Brother Carl on the line. I don't know if you can see this, Carl. I don't know if this looks familiar to you, Carl, from Victorville Restoration. Amen, amen. He, know, he knows why I, I put that up there. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. Here's what the Bible says. 
Uh, this is what we got to go quickly. So let me let me make sure this is what I want. This is what I want. Uh, Revelation chapter thirteen. Um, yeah, but you know what? We because of time. Let me just go straight to fifteen. Yeah, verse fifteen. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, verse 16, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And so the context of Revelation 14 is uh, the foundation of Revelation 14 is coming off of what we read in Revelation 13 with the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast where people can buy or sell. The reason why this, I believe, this is me, I believe that this, the coronavirus uh, is so, is so lethal not from a medical standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint, is that it is going, I believe, it is going to begin to change the way uh, people are going to start having conversations. World leaders are going to start having conversations that they never had before. And I do believe, me, I do believe that this is the beginning to the end. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean next year, all of a sudden, Jesus is going to come? I don't know. The Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. But I do believe that just like the Patriot, just like after 9-11, the Patriot Act came in, started taking away some of our freedoms. Now with this COVID-19, the way it has crippled the world medically, crippled the world financially, economically, crippled the world mentally, now uh, so, crippled the world socially, I believe that things are going to begin to change. And I believe that these scriptures, these words that we've been reading, been preaching, been teaching, writings such as great controversy, desire of ages, last day events, they are coming more and more into life. We can't run from this. I know some people wanted to run because they couldn't see it. I know some people even now want to run because they still can't believe it. Listen, church family, do not be dismayed. What we have been preaching and what we have been hearing all these years are coming to fruition. I do not know. I don't know how long it's going to take, but you know what? Just hold on and stay faithful. There's going to come a time where we cannot buy or sell. There's going to come a time in which they're going to take away our religious freedom. They're going to take away our, what they're doing now, not taking away our religious freedom. Our religious freedom is not being taken away because we cannot worship uh in our church that's not religious freedom that's just some medical precaution uh yeah precautions uh so that we won't so the virus won't be spread but there's going to be a time in which they're going to say universally that we all must worship together uh the same way the same time on the same day and i believe that to be wrong because and not only because I'm a Sabbath keeper, but I believe that to be wrong because that's not, God does not even work that way. God is a God of choice. God is a God of freedom. And for some people to take a, begin to take away our religious freedom is wrong. And so when they begin to take away our religious freedom, that's going to hurt us because they're going to now force us to worship on, the, on a day in which I don't have a problem with worshiping on. I, I, I mean, I preach uh, at, in churches that worship on Sunday. I have a lot of friends. But what my challenge is, is that they are now dismantling or taking apart God's law. Throughout the scriptures, you will never see that God's law was changed. You will never see that the fourth commandment was ever changed. We all, many within Christianity, we all agree that the Ten Commandments is sure and strong. The only challenge that many people have within Christianity, a lot of my friends, is that they say the Fourth Commandment was changed based upon the resurrection. That is nowhere in the scriptures. And then we can prove it also through other writings as well. The people that have changed 
that fourth commandment. They will tell you that they had no authority from God of, from God of heaven to change that, to change the law. And so when those times come, when they take away our religious freedom, um, there will be individuals that if they, if they follow the law of the land, they will receive that mark of the beast. They will receive that mark on their forehead or on their hand. But please be encouraged. For those that do not receive that mark, for those where probation has not fully closed, because remember, there's going to be two probations. A probation for those that know the truth, that's, the, that's going to happen right away. But there's going to be a period of time in which there will be individuals that still have that opportunity. That's why, that's why the, the first angel is so important. That's why the first angel is so important. It says, and I saw another angel, the righteous, fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach. So we preach it now. We preach it now. But when that time comes, we're going to preach it even louder. That's why uh, John says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. There will be people that will realize, you know what? What these people have been saying for a long time is correct. They're going to realize that when I get on that microphone, because you know what? I made a decision. I'm not turning on Jesus. I'm not turning on Jesus no matter what. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But if I'm right, oh, glory, hallelujah, if I'm right. And I know I'm right through faith. And I know that there will be people that will turn, people that will come. They will say, you know what, this, this, this freedom, this taking, away, this taking away people's freedom of worship and different things like that is wrong. We will, we will go on, we will err on the side of those that are preaching this everlasting gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be dismayed. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be discouraged. Because Jesus, he is in control. We have to have faith. In the days before Jesus came, many, many of the Israelites, they began to get discouraged because they heard about the Messiah coming, but the Messiah, the Messiah didn't come. He didn't come. He didn't come. He didn't come. It was years and years. Captivity. Captivity. Bad things are happening. Bad things are happening. But then all of a sudden, he came. And when he came, no one believed. A lot of people didn't believe, I should say. Let's not be like that. Let's learn from history that Jesus, he is not slack concerning his promise. No man knows the day or the hour, but we know that he will come. And he's coming for those that are faithful, and he is giving people opportunity. We still have an, op we still have an opportunity now, but there will also be an opportunity at that time. Please do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm almost done. I know I should have been done, but listen. Techn technical issues held me up. Technical issues held me up. I'm going to blame Paul Thorpe. I'm going to blame Paul Thorpe. No, I'm not blame Paul Thorpe. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, so here it is. All right, global message with the global miss mission. The everlasting gospel is a global message with the global mission. It's glorifying God. And then uh, the everlasting gospel is the gospel. The everlasting gospel is the gospel. I've heard many people want to make a big deal about the everlasting gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, the everlasting gospel is the gospel. The everlasting gospel is the gospel. That's what it is. The reason why it's everlasting is this. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Here's the Christ Christology is all through this, but here's the Christ here's, here's Christology right here. Watch this. The everlasting gospel. Now, the first part of Revelation 14, verse 6 says, um, and I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to all them that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. The everlasting gospel. Go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Go to Revelation, Revelation chapter 7, 7, verse 9. The Bible says this is the everlasting gospel, meaning everlasting means it's everlasting. It lasts forever. The gospel is good news. So the, so the good news of Jesus will last forever. We, won't, we wouldn't have the gospel unless we had Jesus. So Jesus is the good news. And so because Jesus will last forever, the everlasting gospel is everlasting because Jesus lives forever. And the good news is forever. So let me show you this. Let me break this apart theologically for you real quick. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. The Bible says, uh, After these I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, 
and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palm palms or palm branches in their hands. And so we see, we see that the, the fact that this global message and this global message and this global mission will reach the masses because we see them standing on the sea of glass, all right, the everlasting gospel. We see that. What, what else do we see? Go to Revelation chapter 14. Well, we're, we'll go to 14 verse 3, talking about worship, talking about worship. 14 verse 3 says, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Go to Revelation chapter 15, verse 3. Just turn the page. Here's what it says. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Underst yeah, thou King of saints. Understanding that this everlasting gospel is everlasting because in heaven, we will continue to worship God. In heaven, we will see all nations, tongues, people, and kindred in heaven. Uh, the judgment, I quoted to you earlier, we'll read it, well, I'll just recite it for you right now, referencing to the judgment of the, talking about the first angel. The angel talks about judgment. Revelation 22, verse 12. The Bible says, uh, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. Once again, that's the reward. Go to Isaiah 66, verse 23. Last scripture, Isaiah 66, verse 23. Now we're talking about also, we're talking about worship. <clears throat> Look at what's going to happen in heaven. Isaiah 66, verse 23, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before, saith the Lord. This everlasting gospel is to be preached and promoted throughout all the world because it's a global mission with a global message or a global message with a global mission. It's about glorifying God, fearing God, re revering God, worshiping God, praising God. It's the understanding, it's the understanding that we also have to, have to understand that the everlasting gospel is the gospel. Because watch this, and I'm closing right here. We know there's a story that I've heard many years when we get to heaven. We all know that when we get to heaven, we'll have a new body. Uh, we'll, 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 be, we'll, be, we'll be brand new, we'll be brand new. Any scars that we had will be gone. Marks that we had will be gone. All those things will be gone. The story that's told where a little boy, uh, he's gonna recognize Jesus, obviously, but he's going to ask Jesus, why, Jesus, do you still have the scars in your hand? My daddy, he don't have any more scars. This person over here, he don't have any more scars. That person, they don't have any more scars. Their bodies are smooth. I don't have any scars. But Jesus, why do you have those scars in your hand? And the story goes that Jesus is going to say, I have these scars in my hand. The reason why I have these scars in my hand, that's why you are here. That's why we are here. And so understand that the everlasting gospel, it lives forever because Jesus died on that cross to give us an opportunity at eternal life. And that everlasting gospel will forever be lived and forever be preached because Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the good news. And his scars will forever be, and forever will we be with Jesus Christ for eternity. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. 
It is now 1226. Because of time, I am going to close us with prayer. Um, our time is from 10, is from 10 to 12. Technical issues held us up. Uh, we should be right on time next week. Please remember that we have a Wednesday night study. Uh, it's, it's from 7 to 8. Also remember now we're going to go back to our Monday morning manna. Our Monday morning manna is the conference call that you once had before. Um, let me see if I can uh, pull it up real quick so that you guys, so I can read it to you guys. Um, and then we'll have prayer. While I'm pulling it up, please, I want you guys to please remember to be, to be as faithful, uh, as be as faithful as you can um, with returning a, a faithful tithe and a faithful offering um, to continue on with this, with the movement uh, here in San Bernardino, out in Victorville. You can return your tithe and offering via online, or you can return it uh, through the mail, through the P.O. box. You can send it to, a, uh, to our P.O. box as well. And so uh, I, I tell you guys that um, I don't do very well when I have a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, I have it. When I have to look at a whole bunch of things. That's why when I normally preach, you guys see me, I don't have anything in front of me. I, I get kind of, uh, there's too much stuff going on. But here is, I did find, I did find the conference call. So our Monday morning manna is a time of prayer from 6 to 6.30, just 30 minutes. The, just, the conference call number is 712-775-7031. 712-775-7031. Monday morning at 6 a.m., a time of prayer. The access code that you're going to need is 152770. 152770. So please, that's going to be Monday at 6 a.m. Wednesday, we'll be here from 7 to 8. We're looking at the book, Last Day Events. We're going to be studying Chapter 3, Last Day Events, as well as uh and as well as prophetic things in the Bible, Matthew chapter 24, Revelation, the last day events, uh, chapter three, we'll be looking at. And then, of course, next week, uh, a Sabbath, which is Resurrection Sabbath, uh, 10 o'clock is going to be our Sabbath school from 10 to 1045. Pastor Kendall will be leading us there. And then 1045 to 12 will be our uh, our service. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul Ray. <laughs> Man, thank you, Paul Ray. And so that so that's that's what's going on. That's uh, what's going to happen. And so, lastly, um, you can, like I said, you can continue on with you, uh, being faithful in your giving. Um, I know the times are rough, but I, you know, what, it's rough for everyone. But I will, I will, I want to uh, just admonish you to uh, still be faithful because because God is faithful. God is still in control. Remember when. He, he says your bread and water will be sure. Remember when that boy Elijah was, uh, when he was hiding, the Lord still blessed him. He still gave him food. He came in the mouth of raven. Some of y'all would not have eaten it because y'all be like, I can't eat from the raven. It, it, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. If God, if God did it, he'll, he'll, he'll handle it for you. And so remember that our bread and water will all be sure. Let's continue to, let's continue to stay faithful. Um, all right, you guys. So the PO box, uh, Paul. What's our P Paul? If you could tell us our PO box real quick before I pray, um, for San Bernardino Community Church. I'm Pastor Kendall. If you want to say a few words, you can go right ahead, Paul. For what's our what's our PO box? The PO box is one zero one two five, and it's San Bernardino, California nine two four two three. <laughs> All right, put it back on mute for me, please. <laughs> and then Paul, if you uh, put it, put everyone back on mute. And if and Paul, if you can, maybe you could put a message. There's ways to put a message on so that everybody can see. It. If you could just do that real quick, uh, Pastor Kendall, do you have anything uh, before we close for the restoration? No, um, just the same thing. Um, just remember to be faithful. We've given out the information before. Um, we've texted and emailed to our people what they need to do. Looking forward to uh, Resurrection Sabbath. 
and um, being able to share with Sabbath School. Amen, amen, amen. This sister Angela Young, is she is she is she still on the call? Is she still there? Angela, I see you. Angela, thank you so much. Thanks for so so much for blessing us. Oh man, uh, it's good to it's good to see you and hear you. Keep on doing thank that. Keep on encouraging people on Facebook, please. That's what we need. Yeah. Thank you for encouraging us, and we will lift you up in prayer. Please give Stuart our regards and to the rest of your family. Love you so much. So all those that have been on the line. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do like we do church. I'm going to have a benediction, and I'm going to stay on the conference call uh, for a little while, if you are. If, so I'm going to have the benediction for those that have to go, for those that need to go. We, we're, we're over our time. But for those that want to stay in dialogue, we can still have a dialogue. Uh, if you guys want to ask some questions, if you want to read some scriptures, if you want to make some comments, we can still dialogue. But I would do want to have a benediction so that it's, an, it's the service is officially closed, but then if you want to dialogue some more, I'll be right here uh, shaking hands virtually. Amen, somebody. Amen. Okay, y'all. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, 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 let's pray. Let's pray. Let's, let's close. Let's close. Lord, we had a great service despite uh, there were some complications we had earlier. Some people were not, still weren't able to get on. They sent me some messages. God, we pray that we will be able to work through those things and get everybody on throughout the week, our Monday service, our Wednesday night, and then of course our Sabbath next week, Resurrection Weekend, when we lift up even higher the name of Jesus Christ because of what you did on Calvary's cross and the power that you, that you have by raising yourself from the dead. So God, we pray, Lord, that from this service that we will all be encouraged. We have been inspired by the great uh, uh, sound of Sister Angela Young, Lord. We've been inspired by the testimonies. Lord, we have been brought to our knees because of the prayer requests. And Lord, I pray that from this word, that, oh God, that, Lord, that it will encourage us, that, Lord, that we will keep on uh, preaching this gospel, this everlasting gospel, that we won't get tired and well-doing, whether, uh, whether it's from the, in the church standpoint, whether it's at the grocery store, whether it's uh, putting stuff on social media. Help us to live right. Help us to be right, Father. Help us to do the right thing. Help us, oh God, Father, to share this as much as we can, wherever we can, Lord, um, especially when this, when this quarantine regulations have been lifted. So God, help us not to uh, be discouraged at all or dismayed. Help us to embrace the promises and be faithful because you are faithful, God. He that will come shall come. This is a global message with a global mission. Lord, we got to continue to glorify you and worship you because, Lord, you are the great God of heaven. And so, Lord, we thank you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to be sent as faultless before the only wise God with exceeding joy, dominion, majesty, and power both now and forever. Amen. 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 So, church family, God bless you guys for all those that are going to be signing off now. God bless, God bless you guys.